Hey everybody, Jeff here, Aromatics. Hope everybody is doing well. I'm doing fantastic. It is Friday, end of the week. Beautiful day outside, so I'm hoping to get out there and do something. I'm not sure what, but uh, it will probably involve smoking a pipe or a cigar and maybe doing some pre-trout season fishing. Tomorrow's opening day, but maybe I'll get out tonight or hope definitely, hopefully tomorrow and Look forward to some more on-location videos. It's that time of the year. Looking forward to that. Anyway, thought I would do something different today, and that would be show off some of my my cellar, my tobaccos. I had I don't think I've ever really done that, although I, I'm sure some people have seen the tobaccos in my kitchen because when I do some of my live videos, that's where I do it, and you can probably see some of it in the background, although not very close up. But I thought I would do uh, a quick, well, not quick, but a video of the bottom shelf in my display area in the living room. The top two shelves are obviously Christina's Hello Kitty Piper. She's got all of her Marilyn Monroe memorabilia. She's a big fan of her, collects a lot of her stuff. Got my coffee, just woke up. I'm on midnight shift, so it's one o'clock in the afternoon. Got up a little early so I could enjoy the sunshine. Anyway, I thought I would show off some of my tobaccos on here. You can't see the bottom shelf, but I will show you the tobacco that's down there. Anyway, so I hope you guys are, uh, find this fun and interesting. And uh, if you've had any of these tobaccos, let me know in the comments below. So let's start off with this uh, right here. It's got a bunch of random tins. Right on top, Presbyterian, classic English. Did a review of that not too long ago. Uh, English blend, yeah, mild, uh, mild English. Musketeer, this is kind of a rare blend. I don't think I've seen anyone review it except for me and Andrew Sergliano. It is a cube cut burly with some Cavendish and a vanilla topping. It's okay. Uh, yeah. I just like the idea that like, the cubes are awesome. It, the cut looks amazing. Those cube, those actual cubes with the black Cavendish. We got three tins of Verprati from Hearth and Home. This is an excellent, in my opinion, it's an excellent uh, Virginia Perique with just a touch of dark fire. So a little bit of extra complexity there, but it's it smokes basically like a, a, a decent Virginia Perique. All right, there's a nice, uh, some of you guys might recognize that, a 2016 tin of Frog Morton Cellar unopened. And I have just one more tin opened, so I have two tins all together. So I smoke it on special occasions. That is a aromatic English, got a whiskey topping. We got some Sands of Polcro, small batch. A Red Virginia with some Italian dark fired bits in there to give it some spice. Quite a, quite a spicy, complex Red Virginia. I like it, it's good. Gotta be in the mood for it though. We Three Kings, that is a Christmas blend, just kind of a caramelly, Christmassy, aromatic. This one's actually open. Ooh, smells really good. Sweet, sugary caramel. God, I don't know if I've done a review of it. I might have, but decent, decent aromatic. And we got some more tins here. Suge, that one's empty, but that was a really good blend. I wish they still made it. Daughters and Ryan. It is a, uh, it's an English blend, but it's got a, a, an Acadian Perique, very heavy on the on the Perique, very spicy, full flavored, really like it. I, I, I kind of missed it until I got another blend, which I'll show you in a little bit, that kind of replaced it, and now I'm happy. We got a few tins, so here's an extra one here, of four tins of Russ Willett's Firestorm. This is a very unique, Virginia Perique. It does have some dark fired in it, but it's it's unique in the way that it really changes as you smoke it. it. Starts off sweet and cinnamony, and then as you work your way down, it gets spicy. And but so mostly a, kind of that red Virginia flavor. Very yummy. Okay, let's see what else we got here. We got a tin of Redburn. I remember smoking it, but I don't remember. It didn't really stand out. So maybe someday I'll smoke it again, but do a review of it, but don't really know much about it, didn't really stand out. Stonehenge, that is a GLP's blend, and he's in cahoots with uh, Gawith and Hogarth. 
This is a Virginia Preak with a touch of burly. It's very light, very, I find it a little sweet. It's got a little bit of a cocoa kind of taste and a floral Lakeland, just very light. Scarecrow, a aromatic. Uh, I might read you my review because uh, now that I've smoked it a bunch more and it's aired out, it totally changed. So that one was kind of a mixed bag when it came out. One of my, probably one of my top five blends. This is a cigar blend that I enjoy, and that is Low Country's Gwendolos. It is a basically a Virginia Preak, but very Oriental forward with cigar leaf in it. So it's kind of, it's one of those cigar leaf blends. Some of them are Virginia forward, some of them are Latakia forward. This one is if you like Orientals. So it's uh, incense -y, spicy, but no Latakia. Right, and behind that, we've got the big old tin unopened of half and half. Probably my favorite all day, every day, go-to tobacco. Never never goes wrong for me, but it's a love or hate tobacco. Some people love it, some people hate it. I love it. On top of that, got a very underrated tobacco in my opinion. No one really talks about it much, and that is Afternoon Delight. This is a uh, dark fired and Latakia blend with a maple. So it's, it's strong and smoky, but it's got a nice sweet maple, kind of a bacony maple bacon taste. Really good. Although it can have a little bit of a, a bitter edge or an edge to it, but I like it. Uh, if, if you liked Vermont meat candy, but you wish it had more, more oomph that this, they're very similar. Empty tin of Elizabethan mixture. This was the first tin that I got of it and it was from Briar Blues. So thank you very much, Mike. I love it. Between that and Escudo, yeah, can't go wrong. Great, great uh, Virginia Preaks classics. So uh, here's one that either you like it's super unique and you either uh, love it or you just hate it. And I happen to, it's probably one of my top five tobaccos, um, unapologetically. Sometimes, uh, you know, you think like, no one else likes it, but don't care. I do. That is Lane's and Julio. So what that is, is it is primarily a black, a sweet black Cavendish with a little bit of Latakia, but the main component that makes it different is Andulio, which is a Dominican cigar leaf that's been processed like Perique. So it's been fermented and pressed for a long time. So it's, it's spicy, it's sweet, uh, it's unique. There's nothing like it. So. That's if, if there was one blend, I wish they, they, well, I think I have enough of it, but if they were to come out with something again that they stopped making, that would probably be one of them I would recommend. Some people have asked that question on their videos. So here's a mixed bag. So Key Largo, uh, in my opinion, this is probably one of the best Latakia based cigar blends, really creamy, uh, just a great, it's, I call it the Penzance of, of cigar uh, Latakia blends. It's just creamy, well-aged, well-blended, very good. I really enjoy that one. Don't smoke it that much for some reason, but I really enjoy it. Momford Point Marine. Now this was the tobacco I was talking about that replaced the the um, the Ryogen tobacco from Daughters and Ryan. This one is probably one of the strongest, fullest pipe tobaccos that I know of. And it just consists of, there's no Virginia, no Burley. It's like condiment tobaccos. So it's got Latakia, dark fired, and Perique. So spicy, full flavored, but creamy and smooth. I love it. Really like that one. So we got the Beast, small batch. This is a 50% Perique with a little bit of dark fired and some other components soaked in rum. So very strong, probably one of the fullest, strongest blends out there. Although I don't think it's I think if you can't get this, Bayou Night is, uh, is pretty close. It's probably even stronger than this, uh, similar profile. Savinelli 145 anniversary. This one is what bright and red Virginias with some dark fired Kentucky. So like the Italian Kentucky. So uh, it's a little bit of an aromatic too from what I remember. Uh, I don't remember too much about it, but I remember enjoying it. I have an open tin of it jarred up somewhere. Timber, okay. Right there's some McClellan's Dominican Glory Maduro. So this is a stoved 
Red Virginia with Red Virginia and Maduro Cigar Leaf. It's pretty good. It's better now that it's been aged. Took some of that edge off. I find some of the clowns are a little bit edgy, but that one's pretty good. Purple Cow, another cigar blend. This one was one of my favorites back in the day. Just uh, a yeah, classic blend from Bob Renowski, same guy that made Haunted Bookshop. So it's got Burley's, Bright Virginia, Latakia, and Maduro. About equal, equal of each. Good tobacco. Can get a little bit bitter sometimes or uh, have a harsh edge when it's not on, but when it is, it's creamy and good. The Haunting, that is just a Red Virginia and Cigar Leaf from Warped and Cornell and Deal. Ah. I like the Cloud Hopper better. That one's okay, but it's not as complex. But I know Mel Garbage Man Piper loves it. So we got a tin, empty tin. That's probably the first tin I ever got of Autumn Evening. And this is uh, jarred up now, but this is from 2004. So almost 20 years age on this Maple Red Virginia. Uh, very good. Totally, uh, not totally different than like a fresh batch, but it actually got stronger in, in its age, or I don't know if it's this, those tobaccos or if it fermented a bit, but very mapley, but very rich and smoky. A special occasion smoke for me. All right, speaking of special occasion, we got one, two, three, four. I think this is from 2018. These are from 2019. That's the small batch Red Virginia. My favorite, my favorite Red Virginia. I, now that I have like a lifetime supply of this, I don't really need, this fulfills all of my Red Virginia tastes. So uh, I do smoke obviously other Red Virginias just for, just for something different. But if this is all I could get a hold of, I would be happy. Got another two tins of it here. So good. So good. If anybody ever wants a sample of it sometime, just uh, hit me up and I'll, uh, I got lots of it. I can send you a sample if you want to try it. And that's all that's from the, the, the 2015 batch, not the later stuff with the less sugar. All right, so here we've got uh, Five O'Clock Shadow, which is a, a really nice, I think I compared it to uh, Sweet Chili Heat Doritos. Uh, who did a review of it? Uh, Beans316, He uh, Brian just did a review of this a week ago, and I think I've been piggybacking off of his, his viewers because my old video has been getting, has been really popular lately, so I think people are getting recommended off of his video, so thanks, Brian. <laughs> uh, check out his channel, by the way, Beans316, super super nice guy, reviews lots of tobaccos, uh, usually the higher ends. He's not really into the aromatics as really, I think he used to be. But if uh, anything new, uh, check him out. He's probably got it or getting it. Okay, we got some Carolina Red Flake with Perique, small batch. This is a newer, a newer strain of the Red Virginia, but it's still good, it's a full flavored, Virginia Preak, which I enjoy when I'm in the mood for such a thing. What else do we got here? We got four tins of the 20th anniversary. That is a limited, well, obviously, 20th anniversary. It only happens once, right? For smoking pipes, and that is also a Virginia Preak, but this one is lots of lots of Preak. Very strong. Probably one of my top... Virginia Preaks when I'm in the mood for something uh, with red and bright. I like it, put it this way, I like it better than the Carolina Red Flake with Preak. I just find it more complex because it's got some brights in there as well. Okay, we're getting down now. So Searsucker, got that jarred up somewhere. That is a mix of all sorts of leaf and some cigar pressed in a actual cake of layered tobacco, so. That's okay, I haven't done a review yet, but I will eventually. Another, probably my second favorite overall Virginia, that is Opening Night, just a straight Virginia, a, probably almost like a 50-50 mix of brights and reds. As soon as I smoked it, I remember not liking Virginias, I've told the story before. I smoked this and it just popped. Ever since then, been a fan. And last but not least, probably one of the the, you know, better, like if you're in the mood for a cigar blend with like pretty cigar forward, this would be one of my favorites, Cloud Hopper. So it's, uh, what does it have in it? It's got some uh, yellow, red Virginia, 
yeah, yellow, red Virginia, and some Dominican Criollo. I think there's Perique in there as well. That looks like it. Oh, what we got up top? We'll show this off. Royal Twist. I think Brian also did a review of that. I've done a review in the past. A great spicy, smoky Virginia Perique with dark fire. Nice and smoky. Smells like apple pie, cinnamon apple pie to me. And Christina smelled it, thought the same thing, and she said, put it on my shelf so I can smoke it later. So I did. Last And right here, last but not least, John Cotton's Burly Plug. I remember loving this when I first tried it, and then after it aired out, it was it was just strong and bitey. So I don't know what happened there. Maybe my palate changed, but I'll try it again. It's been about a year. It smells good, nice and nutty and smoky. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Something different. Oh yeah, let me show you off some quick. Uh, uh, maybe I'll show that in a different video. I got some cigar tobaccos, but I'll keep this short. Hope you guys enjoyed my review. If have you had any of these tobaccos, anything look interesting to you? Uh, let's talk about it in the comments. So look forward to some more reviews, hopefully some on-location outdoor stuff. Until then, you guys take care. Aromatics, signing out.